Hey there, it's your old friend Ken, out hiking at Irvine Park this morning. You see, I was planning on hiking around Silverado Canyon and Tribuco Canyon, both of which are very popular hiking spots in Orange County. It's our first day of sun in about, oh, 100 years or so. Or at least that's the way it seems, because it never rains here. But for the last, my hat looks really fucking weird. But for the last month or so solid, maybe more than that, it's been rainy and very cold. So hiking conditions have not been ideal, which is a long way of saying that Tribuco Canyon and Silverado Canyon are both packed. I've never seen so many cars. So, I decided to come down here. It's not the best place for a hike if you're training for the PCT, but it is a nice little place. They had a fire a couple of years ago and I thought, what the heck, let's come by and see, see how it's coming back. See, see how the, uh, see how the park is bouncing back from that fire. I also want to tell you about this article I read on Halfway Anywhere. Great website, Halfway Anywhere. You got to check it out if you're even considering hiking the PCT. And they had an article where they polled PCT hikers about what their greatest fear was on the trail. And they had a lot of fears. You should check it out. And if, if you have some terrible fear about the PCT, which we all do, I think, I'm beginning to understand it's, it's not unique to me. A lot of people kind of freak out at the thought. So if you do, check out this article. I've got it linked below. And I thought uh, I would talk a little bit about that article. And also, I wrote up a top five list of things that I'm afraid of when I go on the PCT. Because believe me, sometimes it's all I can think about. So let's get right to it. Halfway Anywhere lists five different kinds of fears. These are weather-related, terrain-related, human-related, animal-related, and town-related. Clearly, if they had room for one more fear, it would be Reese Witherspoon related. In case you're wondering about this uh, backpack, I, uh, I like to carry about 20 pounds whenever I walk or hike. And I basically just take my backpack and load it up with water. So it's about as heavy as I can get it without it being crazy stupid heavy. And uh, I find that that helps condition my feet a little bit if I walk a lot with a lot of weight on my back. So, getting to my top five things to be afraid of or fear or dread on the PCT. And number five is a, uh, it's kind of a combination of a couple things. And I like to put it under the heading of sleeping problems. So what are sleeping problems? Well, uh, for those of you who may have seen or been paying attention to this channel for a while, I have uh, insomnia. When I uh, backpack, I get what's called backcountry insomnia, which is basically I can't sleep in a tent. Until I solved that issue with a sleeping pad. Uh, inflatable air mattress, I should say. Uh, which really helped. So I really have very little to worry about in regards to insomnia, and yet... I've been about four days without uh, a whole lot of sleep, maybe like two hours sleep a night. And this is nothing, this is like normal for me. So it's not unthinkable that insomnia would hit. On top of that, I also sleepwalk. And believe me, my friends and I have had many conversations about waking up on the trail 
a mile away from my tent in the dark, not knowing where I'm going without shoes or a backpack or water. The less said about that, the better. Let's talk about weather-related fears. Hypothermia. Lightning. Having a gust of wind blow you off the side of a cliff. Yeah, those check out. Number four. Anyone who has uh, read um, The Day We Said Goodbye or, uh, I don't know, I think I mentioned it in another book somewhere also, but you probably already know that I'm a diagnosed schizophrenic. Now, my symptoms are not so bad or so frequent that I need to treat them with medication. But there's one thing I do know, and that is that stress brings on symptoms. So one of my big fears, well, the number four <laughs> big fear on the PCT is having a schizophrenic attack. You're probably wondering what that would mean. What would a schizophrenic attack on the PCT look like? Would I be running after other hikers with a plastic spork? No, no, it's uh, usually it translates into a high stress situation and however you would feel when you're under a great deal of stress. That's how I feel normally out of sorts, sick and unable to move. Not something you want when you're hiking the PCT. But then neither are terrain-related fears. Under this heading, Halfway Anywhere lists river crossings and wildfires. Also, falling off cliffs. There's a lot of talk about falling off cliffs. So, right behind me is um, Santiago Creek that usually passes through this park without uh, any water at all. It's the way we have creeks in California. Anyway, I figured it would be an opportune time to talk about my fear number three. Water. You know what I'm talking about. You're out in the middle of nowhere and you got to get water from, I don't know, maybe it's a drip coming off of some moss or maybe it's a cistern full of green and black things that you would rather not know about. Or worse, it's the spring that's off trail somewhere and you don't know where it is. Now I've been on the PCT a couple times, famously uh, screwing up each time. And uh, you get the idea that water's important pretty damn quick. I crossed uh, uh, Scissors Crossing to Warner Springs in 2017 and in that stretch alone, there was one water cache, there was one, um, let's say, container, Barrel Springs. And there was a creek that wasn't even supposed to be running. And thank heaven it was because uh, I needed that water. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody thinks I'm crazy walking around the park talking to myself in my camera. Now, over here, is where the fire was and uh, things are looking kind of green it's nice there's more fire up ahead or I should say there's more evidence of the fire <laughs> up ahead and we'll see more as I as I hike but that water that's that's a tough one I'm gonna be hiking from uh, the 58 from Mojave to uh, Campo so I'll be, I'll be doing all the desert. And the reason I'm doing all the desert is because I thought, back in November, I thought, what if we get a wet winter? And I started Mojave in April. It's cool, there's water. This is the plan. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how, uh, how that turns out, huh? As I'm heading southbound, I won't find too many people to hike with, but that doesn't rule out human-related fears, such as creepy people on the trail, creepy people in towns, creepy people at the Creepy People Club, the CPC. 
Hold on. I'm beginning to sense a trend. We're over on the other side of Irvine Park now, and over here, still, again, <laughs> is where the fire was, and uh, recovery is looking very good. Irvine Park is really special to me because when I was a kid, it was one of the first places that I got to run off in and explore. Yeah, being a child in the 70s was a little different. So, number two, loneliness. I'm gonna let you in on a secret. I get really lonely on the trail. And my strategy for this year may not be the smartest way to go because I'm heading south. Most people head north. So any chance of me getting a hiking partner or a, uh, or a trail family or anything like that is probably nil. Uh, each time I've been on the PCT, each night, I should say, when you're lying in your tent or cowboy camping, it doesn't matter, and you're laying there thinking about your family, or I should say I'm laying there thinking about my family, I get really homesick. So what are you gonna do? Uh, yeah. See, later in the video, I'm gonna have answers for each of these fears. Except maybe this one, because how do you fight loneliness? Well, I have done, I have taken some steps towards that end. But first, let me show you something. All this behind me, these are the stables at Irvine Park. And they went up like a tinderbox back when the fire ripped through here. Now, all metal not using any wood at all because uh, they learned their lesson. So it is a little strange to see these all metal uh, stables. Let's hope I said stables earlier. It's interesting to see them all metal and not the old rickety uh, matchsticks they used to have. And while we're on the subject of animals, let's talk about animal related fears. Bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions, feral dogs, and so much more! So I decided to get off the beaten path and onto the clearly not at all beaten path. I mean, look at, look at this. It's, um, it's kind of a mess, as you might see, and full of water. But, I just realized my face was right in the camera, but uh, all of this was gone last time I was here. Uh, with the exception of some of the trees, everything here was destroyed by the fire. So they've, they've let everything regrow and they've cut a new trail through here. So it looks very even, as you can see behind me, very straight and uh, not at all the mess that it used to be. It's kind of nice. Since I'm off the beaten path, I figured it might be a good time to talk about fear number one, which I would have to say is probably a fear a lot of people have, which is the fear of getting lost or in some other way monumentally screwing up. Now, uh, I'm going south from Mojave to Campo. Most people go north because there's more markings going north. Well, maybe not because, but there are more markings going north and not as many going south. And I have seen stretches where you can't really tell. Oh, there's a lot of mud right here. You can't really tell where you are not reassuring. I know when I was uh, up by Onyx Peak, hiking up there a few years back, uh, I had to use goat hooks, not goat hooks, gut hooks, excuse me, uh, to find my way back to the trail after I took a wrong turn. So I have this, uh, I have this procedure now because of that. Ooh, it's getting windy out here. 
uh, where whenever I take a turn, after I walk a few bits, I automatically check gut hooks just to make sure I took the right one. And I'm gonna need to do a lot of that heading south. But just e even overall, the fear of really screwing up, really making an ass of myself, shouldn't be that big a fear for me if you look back in my uh, video history. I mean, I'm kind of good at screwing up. Still, it is a fear that I have. And before I conclude, a few words on town-related fears, which I think refers to roaming bands of towns hijacking airplanes or something like that. You really should read the article. In addition to all the fears, it also talks about so much shittiness on the PCT. Okay, so what can we do with all of this information? What can we do with our fears aside from just you know, being really afraid of them. Because, like it or not, I think I'm going on the PCT. Uh, I can't back out of it uh, again. I backed out last year, and I, I, I've got that pull. I've got that addiction. I, I've got to go. So what am I going to do about my fears? Well, let me tell you, taking them one at a time. Number five, I believe, was sleeping issues. You can correct me if I'm wrong. And when it comes to sleeping issues, I know I've already solved one of the biggest ones I have. I've basically found the answer. <sighs> My hair looks so weird. Anyway, I've basically found the answer uh, to my backcountry insomnia. So, so I really shouldn't even be worried about that. And when it comes to sleepwalking, I don't do it that often. And as far as I know, I've never done it while backpacking. <laughs> so I really shouldn't be that afraid of that. So that's why I put it at number five. It really isn't something that I, I, I ought to uh, fear or dread. Number four, my schizophrenic issues. Uh, I, um, <laughs> all of a sudden the brakes go on. Uh, I, I, I honestly don't know how I'm gonna, uh, my, my attacks are very infrequent. Um, I, I know a few hours before they get here, I, I have a warning. I have a, like a trigger, uh, but, but they happen, and um, I gotta say, if, if I get an attack on the trail, I'm probably just gonna stay in my tent. I'm probably just gonna take that day and go, hey, this tent's nice, I'm gonna stay in here. If it gets really bad, I may get off the trail. I mean, that would be a reason to get off the trail if I have a really bad attack and I just need to be home. But that's no reason not to go. And I think this is like the bottom line on each of these. No, there's no fear that's so great that you shouldn't go, that you should just let it stop you. Because people hike the PCT every year. They have fears. They get past them. So can we. Number three. 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 Anyway. <laughs> What was number three? Three was uh, water, I think. Was it, uh, uh, yeah, water. And that's, a, that's another one that's just, just miserable. But when it comes to the PCT, there's something that you, you can always count on, that you can always keep in mind. And that is that other people have done this trail too. Other people have found water. And in a year like this, when there's more water than we need, and sometimes more than we want. Um, it's it's not it it alleviates that fear just a little bit. Ah, mio. So, um, I do worry about water, but I know that I really shouldn't. So it's not a reason not to go. Number two. Uh, loneliness. That's a tough one. That's a really tough one. But I have taken steps 
to 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 defeat, to fight, to to slay this dragon. And here's how here's here's what I'm doing. In case you uh, are like me and you go out backpacking and all you want to do is go home. What I've been doing is I've been going uh, alone. I've been going out alone a lot, uh, which is not normal for me. I'm very much a group guy. I'm very much a, a uh, uh, I, I like hanging out with my wife and my dogs. It's really weird, but that's me. Uh, so I don't so much like heading out and doing things on my own. So I've been forcing myself to go out and do things on my own. I have been going to the beach and walking the beach. I have been going to shopping malls, uh, <laughs> which, yeah, I know, I, 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 uh, I, I, I was pretty much alone there too. Uh, but I know that, that the more I get used to being alone, the better I'll be at being alone. So, that's what I'm doing. Now, when it comes to my number one fear, which is getting lost, that's a tricky one because as I mentioned, the PCT is marked uh, better for people heading north than for people heading south. And I've asked around and people have said to me, don't worry about it, there's enough for you to be able to make your way. But I am, um, I am famously good at fucking things up. So, I have what I think may be a solution. And I'll talk about this more in another video. What I've done is I've purchased a little notebook where I can make notes as to what is going to be on the trail. So here's the plan is every page I'm going to write 10 miles of notes, which is where there's water, where there's um, a, t <laughs> a turn off or a town, where there's a campsite, a big one, not one of the small ones. And um, every page will be, you know, five to 10 miles, depending on how detailed I need to be. And that way, uh, rather than checking my phone and checking my maps and checky, 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 I can just open up my book and say, today I'm going to hit this and I'm gonna hit this and I'm gonna hit this. And I'll know that if, uh, you know, when I go to a certain point, I'll stop, you know, maybe I'll stop at this creek, maybe I'll stop at this view or whatever there is uh, as a landmark. And that'll put my mind a little bit more at ease. And where things get tricky, like I've noticed, especially uh, around the LA aqueduct going south, it just looks dicey as far as directions go. There's roads, there's trails, there's turns, and you can't look at any of that in Street View, Google Street View, sorry. Uh, so there's really no way to tell for sure if it's well marked. So for me, I'm going to I'm going to write down notes for that for those sections uh, in particular where I am a little uncomfortable as to which way to go. Now, my fears uh, for the PCT and basically for anything have changed over the years. Well, the first year I did the PCT, my big fear was mountain lions. I was like, you know, there's a mountain lion around every corner and it's going to eat me. After going on the PCT a little bit um, and just hiking in Southern California, I have not yet seen a mountain lion. I never want to. I'd be happy to let them live in peace without ever meeting me. That'd be great. Uh, but I've never run into one. It's not something I really need to be afraid of. So the uh, fear of wild animals has moved down my list as the years have gone on. And the fears that are, are, are the biggest for me are the fears of competency. Will I be able to do this or will I fuck it up and will fucking it up result in me getting really hurt or really embarrassed? <laughs> Either is possible. But I think it's important for anyone going on a long backpacking trip, uh, such as the PCT or specifically the PCT, to just know what they're afraid of and why, and why it shouldn't matter. Because you're gonna get through it, I'm gonna get through it, and unless I bail after about five to six inches on the PCT, uh, no shit, I, 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 don't, I don't normally go very far. Uh, 
unless I completely bail, this should be, this should be epic. This should be amazing. Um, when I'm on the PCT this time, uh, there's a few things I'm gonna try and keep in mind, uh, such as don't quit, rest. Don't stop, or, or, or don't bail, just stop. Just take it in. Don't rush to judgment. Um, and the other thing uh, specific to my trip is I don't care how much of the trail I do. If I get off the trail and I decide I want to go someplace else, I'm going to do it. This is not a PCT through hike that I'm going to attempt. This is a, a two month journey, let's say. I'm just going to go out and, you know, if, if I get to the, uh, the endangered species, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Turn off um, detour up by Wrightwood. If I get up there and I can't find the way or whatever, and I'm there by uh, the highway that goes to Wrightwood, which I believe is the two, um, and, and I'm hitching, and some, somebody's like, uh, I'll take you to Wrightwood. Okay, I'll go to Wrightwood. Because uh, I don't really care about Mount Baden-Powell that much anyway. Uh, you know, and the same goes anywhere. If, if I'm on the trail and I want to go over here, or if I want to go over there, I'm just going to do it and uh, take this opportunity to expand my horizons and enrich my life because we're all we've got out there when, it, when you really get down to it. And we should be doing this for the most selfish reasons possible. So that's it for me in this video. I'm gonna walk around this park a little and enjoy the sun and not talk to my camera for a little while, which would be nice. And uh, with any luck, I'll be out hiking again real soon when everything's not packed and when it's not raining. So uh, let's see. I mean, I'm, I'm happy it's raining. It's Southern California, it's beautiful, but it's, not really something we're used to down here. It's kind of weird. So until the next video, see you on the trail. And there you have it. You've just survived another Ken LaSalle video. For more information about new releases, projects in the works, or even stuff from the archives, head on down to KenLaSalle.com. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and all around social media. Just as long as it's called Facebook or Twitter. Thanks for your support, as always. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, and I'll be back soon with more nonsense.